Hello and welcome back to another episode of We Have Been Watching Podcast. I'm Mart and today we're talking about everything, everywhere, all at once and Stranger Things, the start of season four. Talking of Stranger Things, there's no thing stranger than Rob. Hello, Rob. How are you doing? Hello, Mart. <laughs> How are you doing? So I, I watched everything, everywhere a little while ago. Uh, yeah. I'm really interested to hear what you thought about it. And I, because yeah. I'm a greedy, greedy binger, I've binged all the season uh, for a Stranger Things, so I look forward to hearing about that. It's, yeah, well, I think we'll, we'll talk about the first half and then talk about the second half, another episode, because it, it, it's mammoth, isn't it? I mean, oh, each episode's really, really long. Big. So. It's really big. Yeah. First of all, then, Robert, should we get those tesky, tesky, pesky trailers out of the way? Let's do yeah, it. Yeah, that's what you can pronounce it, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Now I ha- yeah. I haven't watched X yet, but I so did. X, I think I I took. I'm sure we'll, I've talked about X on the you, show. You have, and you gave it quite a good yeah, so review, yeah. And I was a bit stupid that I didn't realise about the actress was playing a dual role in it. So okay. I'm stupid like that, but um, yeah. So there's a you know it's, it's like X is just this sort of seventies style. Um, Emulator and oh, right, yeah. lo fi horror movies of Texas Chainsaw vein rather than me trying to be modern or quirky like Scream or anything yeah. like that. It's just, it's just doing, you know, raw, trying to just play it straight. And um, yeah, there's this sort of creepy, this is creepy old couple in it. And this is like a prequel which um, of the creepy old lady, what was she like when she was younger, what turned into a killer uh... type thing. Oh, right, okay. And so it's pl- so it's played by the same actress that was in X. So it makes it all kind of makes sense when you see X. You'll think, oh, I can see why they're doing a sequel. Right. Pearl, it, all, it all it all sort of makes so, sense. Apparently, apparently, the I think it's filmed during some of the lockdowns because that's the other thing with X. It's got a very minimal cast. Min, you know, it's just one location yeah, type enough, of thing, yeah. like, a sh- like a shed in a field in a house. That's it. Yeah. And they had the cast, so they decided to go ahead and let, oh, let, let's just make a prequel while we're all here. And supposedly, oh, good done, idea. Just done, done a little bit like that, a bit more impulsive. Well, it's, it interesting. Looks good. it's interesting because this trailer for Pearl absolutely sold it for me. It's got that kind of, oh, how do you describe it? Doris Day <laughs> kind of movie. Yeah, it's it's got... a, yeah, it does, yeah. The, way, the, the music and the lettering style and stuff like that. But then... Dick Van Dyke show, no, not quite. Yeah, like that but then bit. it's like, and then it's obviously got people being, you know, like it's obviously clearly a horror movie. Yeah, she, that she's this girl, selling. isn't she? That's like introducing Pearl, and she's like this sort of. They're not Amish, yeah, are they? Can... She's not Amish, is she? But she. I don't. I don't know. Or it's just meant to be sort of very. I don't know. It sounds really fancy. It's like like simple focus on this. You're just like from the backwoods. Back. Yeah of nowhere sort of thing and wants to be a big movie star well, and, and is, is folk, like, aren't they? yeah and she's sort of is she meant to be all sort of naive or something about the ways oh, of the world yeah. and i guess what well, people don't realize really she's bonkers i guess and yeah she's I, a killer. I imagine but it looks really good shoes, i guess it looks really good i like the look mm. of that already so i'm gonna watch x in plenty of times watches so you've put in our notes joker 2 which isn't technically a trailer is it have I you have, seen the no, thing I haven't, I haven't seen this so tell tell me what this is so all it is is some silhouettes uh, with a little bit of music to announce the title and the date, which is sometime in 2024. Okay. Um, do you not know anything about this? No, nothing at all. Okay, so it's not called Joker 2. It's called, let me tell you, because I've got, it's got like a French title. Uh, Folie à deux, which I guess is second film in French or something like that. Okay, yeah. It's called Joker Foley a Deux, and it's got some old style sort of musical music playing on the, um, over this l- title card. Right. Whacking Phoenix. So I think it just comes up as Phoenix. And then right. it comes up Gaga. And then it shows silhouettes of Lady Gaga in a long dress, and Whacking Phoenix is the Joker, just black on red silhouette, sort of dancing. And it's a musical. What? <laughs> But so, so, so is this just like uh, it's obviously a scene from the next Joker film where he's imagining so not a musical scene, interlude? We well, yeah, so th- this is, is yeah the thing you have to see. It's only like a few seconds. It's not even a see- scene really. It's just 
some black on red. It's almost it's like a little annou- announcement thing, really. Okay. So it's just like, it's, it's just like a title card, and obviously it's just confirming the rumours that Lady Gaga is going to be in it as a musical. And so this is kind of confirming that for people, really. Okay, right. Well, it look, sounds like a, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's it sounds like a potentially disastrous idea, but the only the only thing that's in the, in the back of my mind was. Didn't I say this probably when Joker was announced? Because after Suicide Squad, I, I'm sure yeah. I probably said, "What is what a disastrous idea! Why do we need why to make a Joker film? Joking, why are we yeah. making another Joker?" But but it worked, didn't it? And it's very very popular. Yeah, and, I absolutely love it. So, Phoenix is full method, isn't he? So so Lady Gaga is going to be um, a Harley Quinn essentially, is what people are saying. Oh, okay. So whether she's going to be a psychiatrist and he's going to have the same kind of crazy delusions, I suppose. Well, you know, this idea, well, did it happen or was it all in his head? Well, she's going yeah. to go more down that road. And because, I mean, they can, if they want to, they can allude to the fact the whole first film was in his head so they can go where they want with it. But it's Good, in, light yeah. of what, in light of what they've been saying about, um, you know, like the Batgirl film being cancelled and wanting to have a more Marvel-style 10-year plan, the new DC bosses are saying but then this comes out i think this is a bit left field and are they trying to do a marvel unified thing or not oh, you've got know. joker that... 2 and you've got batman over here is his own universe joker's its own universe have you got a dc universe anymore i don't know what i don't doing. know but that 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 joker film worked very very well for itself so if it's the same sort of thing that's good mm, we'll what? see come on then rob everything everywhere all at once right um this film I had a lot of critic hype. I am um, a lot, a lot of people were talking about it as, as being an amazing film. Some decent directors and stuff. People that you know know their stuff are talking about it's one of the best Ooh, films I've seen. Feel, oh, can, I, lot, can I feel a bus come on? Of, it? <laughs> yeah, a can... lot of hype coming up here. Uh, I think well, people are right when they're saying if you're going to watch one multiverse film this year, watch this one instead of you know instead of Doctor Strange. Yeah, I can see where they're coming from with that. It's packed with so many good ideas and so many good performances. Rob, what's the give, give just for anyone who hasn't seen or doesn't know? What's the sort of rough uh, she, outline? Yeah, she needs to Michelle Yeoh, isn't it? Michelle Yeoh, who is this put upon, struggling um, laundrette owner with a daughter she doesn't have a good relationship with, a husband the uh, marriage is breaking down, with a dad who's coming to visit it's all on top of her yeah and she <laughs> needs to basically fight off some well evil they get, they get tax, multiverse overlord yeah they get tax audited on top of all of that yeah, they? yeah yeah so everything's on top of her and then she finds out she's gonna have to somehow she's the chosen one that needs to save the whole uni- multiverse yeah from this big bad that's coming and the way she can save the days by accessing the memories and abilities of other versions of her so it's this idea that every choice you make obviously the multiverse for anyone yep. that doesn't know every choice you make has a ripple effect that creates a different you and a different universe so there's a universe where in this case she never got married and instead became a big movie star rob is there a universe so, where we're top of the podcast charts there will be if, if if the universe if the multiverse is infinite oh. then that must exist or can or can science fiction only imagine so many things not not, not nothing not, too ridiculous nothing too ridiculous yeah come on so that idea we think like, i think if you if you if you, if you either watch the doctor strange or any any number of sci-fi shows yeah. you, you, you 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 get the gist of yes. it yes yeah uh it's got the guy um ki hoi kwan who was short round from Temple of Doom, or oh, he's all grown up now, playing her husband. He's excellent in it. Michelle Yeoh, we've said before, can do anything. She's fantastic. Fantastic, she? especially when she's able to play all these different versions of her out the film. She's amazing. Uh, there's a really clever idea where to be able to access their alternate version, they have to do something really unpredictable and weird, don't they? Yes. So like when he just suddenly starts eating a lipstick or something like that, because the reason is your timeline kind of gets stuck then and it's not predicting where your timeline's going and that gives you the, the ability to then That's jump right, to another yeah. timeline. So that idea was all cool. So that 
you know, when they're in the middle of a fight scene, they're doing these weird things, aren't they? And some of that stuff's kind of out there, stuff going up backsides at one point, isn't there? People sticking <laughs> some to their arse and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. And it's, and it's mad, and some of it, some of it is a bit kung fu. There is stuff there about I think family it was drama and stuff I like that. I think it was marketed a bit too much in the action-y thing, actually. Yeah. Um, so there's so far, I've got nothing but praise for what I'm saying. There is a book coming. I know. There, there is a load, a load of good stuff in it that I really, really liked. But I did feel it overstayed its welcome a little bit. It was a I bit long. It, it was a bit long, wasn't I, it? I felt there were scenes where it could have calmed down a little bit, and just I think everything's explained on the move. So even you know, seeing like Kihoi Kwan's character, the the husband, who, yeah, you know, like another version of him pops in his head, takes over his body, and then it's explaining to her things to her, and it's the thing where he's explaining to her really, really quickly and breathlessly, with an accent because English isn't going to be his first language yeah. as an actor, I assume, as well. There's loads of mad stuff going on and you feel like you're sort of trying to keep up and I kind of, I feel like it needed, you know, in Back to the Future where you just have Dot Brown with a board and he just goes, look, Marty, this is this what is happens. It 1995, yeah. Or, or the bit in Looper when they're sitting in the diner and they start explaining it, and then Bruce Willis's character basically just says, look, look, it's complicated, I haven't got time to talk about it now, just forget it. Yeah. Just that thing where you just have a, a, a bit more of a quiet moment. I felt that the whole film was very frenzied, and I felt like it just needed to calm down just a little bit. Now, I did... But there's so much good stuff in it there. Uh, th- th- there's, there's ideas in this. So there's, there's, a, there's a scene where a character falls down the stairs. I think it's a daughter... And as she falls down, every time she hits a step, she changes costume, doesn't she? And yes. The, 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 she, and she was the girl that played the daughter was great. She was fantastic. I thought she was wasn't brilliant. It? And there was, I really liked this. It was mad. It was crazy. It was just a bit too long because actually wrapped in up in all of this, Rob, isn't it? It's a very Wizard of Ozzy, isn't it? Actually, the film is about different generations. Yes, Get, getting yeah, on. Her family so, is making connections. Yeah, her, her daughter's, her daughter's uh, recently come out as gay, hasn't she? And Michelle doesn't know how to explain this to her pensioner dad, who's very, very traditional. And it's all of that. And she herself is, says to her da- daughter, "Oh, you're too skinny, or you're too fat, or you're," and she's she can't connect with the way that sometimes parents do, where they kind of look like they're criticising. But they care, but they're not actually doing it it's in a the way idea that her, connects... her character's never made a decision that she really wanted to do, isn't it? This, that's, that's meant to be the idea why, why she's so easy for her to access all these alternates because she's, she's always made bad decisions. <laughs> yeah. She's the worst version of her. Um yeah, I mean, there's a thing. There's it, like, there's, there's that one fight scene, isn't there, when there's like people as people are turning into confetti and stuff like that, and there's like mad stuff where people are, there's like a romance with. Jamie Lee Curtis's tax officer, where they've got, got sausage hot dog fingers. fingers, and, the, and there's, a, there's like an ex, there's an explanation to why the there's like a 2001 oh, parody that, that explains why they've got sausage. Oh, it's, it's just rammed uh, there's, there's, with there's brilliant a, ideas. There's a whole but I feel like from an editing point, it's too fast. There's a whole Slow running down. story where they're rocks, aren't they? Yeah, oh, like, yeah, in, in, this, like in this universe, we're, 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 we're rocks. And she's like, I'm going to run away. And she's like, you can't run away. You're a rock. And you're we're slowly moving over millions of years. There yeah. was, there was I a thought f- with this, um, don't you think this kind of makes Doctor Strange 2 look a bit less good? Because this, just a, you could just take in a pinch of this kind of creativity Doctor it, Strange 2 doesn't yeah. spend a lot. It, it doesn't spend a lot of time in all multiverses, and it's not mad enough to be called multiverse of madness. This is imagine these kind of ideas thrown into Doctor Strange 2. Doctor Strange 2 could have been something really special. Rob, I'm going to be the biggest art house ponce you've ever heard of in your life. Now, do you think multiverse of madness is perfectly mad and multiversey enough for your average cinema going watcher? If you like the Fast no, and the Furious no, films, it, no, it could, it, it, right? it could have, it could, it could be madder. It could, it could have been madder. Maybe, I, I, but this is is for I think this is everything everywhere. What was is is for those proper nerds who love art house cinema who, a little who, bit. who, it's who a bit geek more, out yeah, over yeah. alternate multiverse realities. 
yeah, the, I think there was a fight scene, fans. wasn't there? I think you just mentioned it, and you see sort of Michelle Yeoh squaring off for a fight, but it's the weirdest fight you've ever seen in your life, and it's like she goes to the first person and says, "You've always wanted a puppy." So she gets it and gives him a dock. And then the next person says, didn't you always want to be a singer? And so she gets him and makes yeah. him into a singer. And actually, instead of fighting these people, she makes them happy and gets past them. It, you're right. It's full of so many ideas. And uh, her husband fighting with a, a bum bag or a fanny pack, as it's called abroad, was fabulous. Did you know they actually did want Jackie Chan in this for that role? But apparently they said it, it would undermine Michelle Yeoh's sort of character and story because everyone would just be saying it's a Jackie Chan film so I went with him instead it, for me it was a little long it was a little long but I did love it and I thought about it a lot after yeah but it dragged yes, on but... it did drag on I don't know what it dragged on on it was more about the fact you have a conversation about with a daughter I'm really sorry I, I don't know how to connect with you as a younger generation all, but then, all that, have... that whole the last 20 minutes just dragged its feet. But yeah, the that's yeah, exactly yeah, it. They have the yeah, same but... conversation about four yeah. times. And like, like, I'll get the point, move yeah, on. I get yeah. it, I get it. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis is just fabulous. <laughs> yes. In a frumped up, dowdy role, yes. isn't it? And it? Very good. And again, it's that thing, it's that, it's that Terminator thing. What if someone turned up at your door and said, actually, the world you know is all different? C- can you believe them? I don't know. No. <laughs> it's the Matrix thing. But yeah, it's yeah, good. It's good. good. Um, right, Stranger Things, first half okay. of Stranger Things season four. I'll, I'll, I'll try not to spoil. If I accidentally spoil something, I'll try not to, okay? I'm going to sort of be very so vague. The first, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I think without going into spoilers on it, but so just as a general feeling yeah. of the first half of this season four, what what did you feel about the first half? Well, first of all, I was like, oh, they're all grown up, aren't they? <laughs> <I was laughs> <not fair. laughs> Have they grown up? Uh, I did a little bit, you, you know, in... Uh, like a bit, a little bit like a drinking game. Now I don't, I don't know if this is the the series as a whole. There was so much of Millie Bobby Brown staring at the camera crying. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> I thought the I, I kind of forgotten how Stranger Things went. So it took me probably most of the first episode to sort of get my vibe back. Then I thought to myself, this is aimed, I believe, at sort of teens and tweens. Would you agree? Is it kind of a younger Teen. t- teens, teens and older teens? Yeah, yeah I'd teens. Say. I thought it's quite quite gruesome actually. Some of the first couple of kills in it. Uh, yeah, they're interesting. Though. I like those. It's it's very Stephen King again, isn't it? You know, it's yeah. eighty set kids on bikes. Oh, eight is the, the bit when they go to visit the. Um, it's an arcade, is it? Somewhere? Well, they go to they go to the prison. And they walk down the corridor, oh, and it's basically it's not lambs. even a homage. It's, it's 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 a complete rip off of Science of the Lambs, and then novelty casting having um, Robert England. I know, and I was like, Ugh. and they met, they even mentioned Freddy Krueger in the film, and I was like, wow, that's some that's some yeah. meta, meta on top of meta here. But uh, first half, well, uh, overall the series, I enjoyed it, I liked it, and you can always tell, right, when these things are an hour long, you over watch an hour. You, it, you Each watch, one's over now, they're too long. You watch it and then you think, do I want to watch another one? Yes, I do. Uh, there are some things in there oh, mm. where, you, you know that doctor with the white hair? Papa. The, yeah. The, 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 Matthew Modine's character. Yes, yes, that's him. Yeah. He's so obviously a weirdo, <laughs> freak, bad guy. Yeah, yeah she's like, he's like, Come on, eleven. You need to come back, and we need to do X, Y, Z. And she's like, oh, uh, 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 okay, yeah. whatever. Well, it, well even, even before they reintroduce him, because that's kind of right about where I've got to that yeah. point. God, the, the Hopper's stuck in Russia. Yeah. This, this big plot line about, oh, we've got a message from Russia. Oh, what could it mean? Oh, so we've got in touch with someone in Russia. Oh, what could it mean? Oh, we need to go in a ransom. Oh, so let's go and do a ransom. Oh, no, the ransom bit's been bungled and it's been captured again. And I thought, oh, my God, we've got four episodes in and you're in the same place as you were in the start of episode yeah. one. Hopper in, Hopper's still in prison in Russia after four <laughs> episodes. <laughs> yeah. It looks, just, it looks great, though, doesn't he? I must admit, everything, he's, he's buffed Everything up. takes too long. Oh, it's, it's, it's it, very... It feels, like it, it feels like episodes of TV where they've been told by Netflix, right, we want each episode to be at least an hour and ten. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So every scene... And it, this is making me think, like, um, 
Like, you know, if you had a scene like a character which was just going to speak to someone in a trailer park, and I'm in my head, I'm thinking, you see the you see the car pull into the trailer park, cut to them knocking on the door and someone answering the door. Yeah. Hello, Mr. Hi, Pierce. Yeah, so and so, yeah. But the Stranger Things season four, no, they'll have to pull in, stop and talk to someone. Hi, do you know which one where Mr. Pierce's house? And you know, I think it's down that one there. Okay, all right, then another shot of them driving down, a shot of you getting <laughs> you out of the car, shot yeah. of you walking up on the door, knocking on the door, no answer, having a little peek through the round the back, still no one there, knocking on the door again, and then finally someone answers the door. Every single scene feels like it's just edited to a point where it's just just dragged like they're filling time all the time like you know like on live television when they're you know someone in the earpiece saying pad it out pad it out yeah, make it going, longer make it in, longer yeah. we're, not ready, we're not ready for the next bit yet it felt like that but in scripted tv everything felt like padded out and dragging I mean, its feet it, it is rob it is rob and the, yeah, the yeah, second half got... better be better yeah the... The first half is... <laughs> lots and lots of padding what do you think of sort of the new sort of milli, uh, well, what was it, 11 at school being bullied type thing well, again. Why she got no powers at the start? Did she burn, that, her, did she burn herself out at the end of the last s- series? I don't know, but all that stuff was so predictable because the thing with that, where the, the, they're obviously playing into tropes and cliches, but I don't want to see tropes and cliches. It's so, all the mean girls in it, it's just. Every American high school film that you've ever seen has got those same mean girls bullying people and the jock boyfriend who was like, oh, yeah. let's go and kick his ass. No, let's not leave it to the police to sort out. No, 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 you've decided it's it's so-and-so. You know, you know. There's a there's a bit further on in that. We'll have to talk about that jock boyfriend again later on where uh, that kind of similar thing plans out. The, uh, the, the, key, the, the cast is massive. They keep adding characters, adding characters. So you've got Eddie you know, now, haven't you? Which is the new Dungeons but, but, and Dragons. But what I felt with that, though, is why did they need to introduce Eddie and have Eddie framed? Wouldn't it be an interesting if it just been one of the cast we already know? Well, well yeah. It's been Lucas, Lucas that got framed. Yeah. Or Max. Max in the trailer park. Um, have you, you done know, it? She yeah. starts doing a bit of drug dealing on the side or something, and they're like, "Oh, come on, you, you're going off the rails now. You need to come back to us, our friends. You, you get, you're hanging around with some, you know, dodgy types who don't like it." M- Max was going to sort the cheerleader out with some drugs, and then Max becomes the one that's wanted by the police. You, why do you need to keep introducing all these new characters? There's, there's, there's too many. So the episode is. <laughs> it just feels and like also, it's just how old is Eddie? Kind of everyone. How old is Eddie meant to be? This is that this is that Breakfast know. Club thing again, isn't First it? First episode. I mean, after a couple of episodes, it stopped grating on me. But the first couple of episodes, when he's like doing a speech in the cafeteria and he's standing on the table, and I was cringing. I was thinking, why are you acting like yeah, like the guy in Breakfast Club? It's just cringy. Yeah, I'm it, it not is, overly uh, impressed so there, far. There's no one. Four. There's no one at school with that kind of confidence. <laughs> not at that age. Now, yes, mm. if you're in your forties and you got a bit of life experience, dun, dun, for anyone who's listening, Dungeons and Dragons in the eighties was not like that. It was. <laughs> it was not a we're we're cool as anything. It was. It was a load of nerds. Getting all, the, together. all the ideas in, in retrospect, we can think, oh, maybe they're a bit cool. But at the time, looking like that and being into that kind of music, I guess were considered outcasts and things. Yeah. But anyway. Um, we've got we've got a couple of minutes you want to um, yeah, sure. talk about something else you've seen like what else have you seen pick something up. I've watched Spiral the Book of Saw would this be technically Saw 6 uh, 7 what are we up to I don't know I don't know which one I watched last so it's Chris Rock and Samuel L. Jackson now this started off and straight it starts off with Chris Rock doing a little bit of a monologue and he's talking about how Forrest Gump was a really nice guy and then he died and the other guy's going no no he didn't die and he's like no no Jenny Jenny got AIDS and she gave it there's no Forrest Gump too and you know for a few minutes you're like oh he's being Chris Rock here I can't take him as a as a cop and it kind of jarred but I must admit as it went on it so basically Chris Rock is a cop. He ratted out a, c- a couple of dirty cops a few years ago. All the rest of his friends hate him. He's got to look after a new rookie cop on his on his beat. And then these killings start happening in bizarre and unusual ways, like the Saw thing. And, and they sort of target Chris Rock and said, you know, you're the detective. You've got to try and figure it out. Samuel L. Jackson's his dad. There's a bit of fruity language from both of them. But I must admit, you well, know... Samuel L. Jackson swearing. 
I know. Who'd have thought it? He drops, he drops the N-bomb several times as well. I must admit, so I started watching it and I thought, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, oh, it's Chris Wright. It's, you know, they're too famous for these, like, because it feels like a low-budget horror. Uh, there was a couple of bits and I was actually, like, looking away because it was so gory. And I thought, gee, I, you know, I'm used to watching horror. I'm more than happy watching horror. But there was a couple of bits and I was like, whoa, that that's that's re it's, a, it's an 18 you know that's really pushing it but i must admit as i went along i quite got into it and actually i've recommended it to a couple of friends to watch because it was a nice hour and a half fairly short little gore fest story thing uh unfortunately leaves itself wide open for a sequel but it was quite no. good it was i know they all, so, well, all of these so they did saw one two three four five six God. and then Seven was called the final <laughs> chapter, <laughs> but it was obviously their line. It wasn't well, the final chapter. It, it, and they did a film called Jigsaw, and then they've done some... The problem I have with Saws, which is why I've given up, I never stuck with these. The first one was kind of an interesting sort of bit of a... Yeah. yeah, it had a little bit of a twist in there. You, you, it was a bit of a mystery of what was going on. And it's also a little bit of what would you prepare to do in that situation? So you just thought... It's the moral dilemma, isn't it? Would yeah. I, yeah, it's like, would I prepare to do that for to save my family, for example? Yeah. That you're hor- doing something horrible and unthinkable to escape. So I think the first one was really good, but I don't think it... it the series never seems to keep up with that. It just seems to be turned into torture porn and people just seem to be get put, put in awful situations. Yeah. And it's, and it's not about, all well, what would you... Do? What would you do? It was a trade-off. Would you be prepared to do this for this? They're all basically just horrible things that are just like, here's something really horrible. Do and, this horrible thing usually, or you're dead. They're usually horrible people as well. You normally find... I think I've watched three or four of the Saw films. And then yeah, I saw this just, today. This one popped up. It was like new in the UK today. But I've got to say, if you like if you like gore, gore horror, it was quite good. I quite got into Chris Rock uh, as, a, as a cop. He was quite good. Good job, it's Will, interesting good, casting, isn't it? Though? Good job, Will it's Smith wasn't of... in there, right? It's not, Will Smith isn't Spiral or Saw in this. So. Spiral, the book of slap. Yes, yeah, man. Go on, Rob. What else we got? Is there anything else you want to have on here? Just quickly before we finish uh, off. Just quick mention. I, I've finished off season four of Doctor Who. Yes. I've just started season five. So season four with him and Donna. And yeah, Catherine Tate annoys me in her comedy shows. She kind of annoyed me in her first special that she did before the start of season three. But then she comes back as a main character, and instead of having a any kind of potential love interest or chemistry there, or the assistant just being another young girl that fancies the Doctor, which they've done so many times, like Donna holds her own, and she won't have any of his nonsense. Yeah, and she really put him in his place. There's a brilliant episode called Turn Left, where it's the life that she chose. Just the day she met the Doctor, if she turned left instead of turned right, Ooh. or whichever way around it was, is this always like her a life leaf, would have been a leaf is falling that, from a tree, or is that a different episode about the day? Uh, I'm not sure about that. She got, she got this weird spider thing on her back that feeds off alternate timelines, a bit like everything oh. everywhere all at once. Oh, okay, and and so it's basically no Doctor in that episode. Really, it's pretty much Donna what Noble's if? character, yeah. and it's really good. So by the end of the series, when he obviously leaves Donna and he's not with her anymore. It's really heartbreaking, and um, it's good endings. Um, they bring back Davros at the end for the big finale. Rose comes back, and Thingy Jones turns up, yep. and then you've got uh, Jack Harkness turns up. John Barrowman's character turns up. So you've got all these other. It's like a big gathering. It's like a little Avengers End Game <laughs> 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 yeah. of Doctor Who. Yeah, this all day. All these yeah. characters, and uh, Will's in it. Bernard Cribbins, R.I.P. Oh, bless him. him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so when it when it finally gets to the end, you get to the end of that series, and I just thought, oh my gosh, David Tennant is the best Doctor. I love, 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 love David Tennant. I'll never get over him. I'll never, ever, ever get over him as the Doctor. He's the best. Start watching Matt Smith episodes. Oh my God, Matt Smith's so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's that bit in Blackadder, isn't it, when it's like, I'll never forget, never, 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 never. Right, what's for breakfast? <laughs> yeah, it is, isn't it? No, fabulous. Yeah. Rob, on a very, very, very last note... You've you've sent me a link to archive.org with is it called Nebula or Nebulous? Mark Mark well, Gatiss. This, right, this is when I used to work in the comic shop, which is oh how many years ago? I don't know. I've been teaching for like seven, eight years, and then before that, eight, like, like 15, about twenty odd years 15, ago. Twenty, yeah. 
Yeah, so about 20 years ago, I used to work in the, sh the comic shop. And uh, a friend of mine who's a big Doctor Who fan and sci-fi geek introduced me to this show. And I haven't thought about it for 20 years until David Warner, another RIP, David yes. Warner passed yep. away, hasn't he? And it popped in my head and I was thinking, hang on, there's a really funny Doctor Who spoof with David Warner on years ago I listened to. So it's a radio show, it, isn't it? It was a Radio 4 yeah, radio show. I Googled it. Found it. I've sent you the link. I've not even had a chance to listen to it myself Rob, yet. I'm, I'm it loving this. So I've done a bit of driving and I, I, I do a bit of like DIY at the weekends. And I have this on. Well, I've started listening to it. I'd never heard of it, but I love Mark Gatiss. And I used to, I do like radio shows and things like that. This is brilliant. It's it's a spoofing I've got, on I've got, the old. I've got a thought with you liking Hitchhiker stuff. I oh, thought you'd yeah. like this. Yeah, it, so it is. It's, it's Hitchhiker's Guide mixed in with Doctor Who radio show or earlier because it's got some of the same musical cues. You know, so you'll say, This is the terrible pterodons. And you can say, and it's like organ music comes on. Uh, and there's lots and lots of spoofs, lots and lots of Mickey taking. David Warner is good in it. Uh, I think there's like four seasons. I'm into season two, halfway through season two. The twenty what twenty five minute episodes. It, we, need, we need to. Do you just shall I share a little uh, oh, a, a, a link to this because if, if any one of our listeners has got similar taste to us, wants to know what this is, it's I'll, fabulous. I'll, 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 I'll post a picture on uh, Instagram and Twitter, just going, "This is what we were talking about." Yeah, it's brilliant. It's great little say little BBC radio program of a doc but it is it's doctor who really isn't it and yeah or, or alan quaterman it's that kind of thing as well isn't it yes yeah but what's quite funny is david warner's character is a doctor and mark gatiss character is a professor isn't he so in this last episode i've just listened the some aliens and they're talking to david warner but but that they, they've not got that alien and they're going come with us doctor and i'm like yeah that's proper doctor who radio play rip off stuff there it's brilliant i i'm so glad you shared it because it's fantastic really good fun right. great little show uh, i'll put hashtag doctor who on instagram I, I, I can't imagine that hashtag nebulous is going to get anything <laughs> i guess i guess not. No, God, i don't know what else that might mean but I'll, I'll put it on Instagram anyway so when this episode does come out at least it's on Instagram fabulous there we go then, Rob yeah. should we wrap it up for today yeah yeah that'll do us guys thank you for joining us for this mixed episode of all sorts of things if you've watched everything everywhere all at once or if you've watched Stranger Things or if you've listened to Nebulous drop us a line so we've been watching podcast at gmail.com over on Twitter WHBW podcast and on Instagram it's we've been watching podcast and until next time we'll see you soon take care bye bye bye